Hello, lesser humans. I am a Ferrari owner now, which means I think I'm a very important person. And from this day forward, I will only wear Ferrari apparel and wear special driving shoes and bring up my Ferrari in casual conversation with strangers and look around at traffic lights to see who is staring at me while I drive my Ferrari. Well, maybe not that last part, as my Ferrari is broken and it's time to figure out how badly I've screwed myself. To recap my last video, I actually traded my 1992 Acura NSX away, which was perfect and totally sorted, for this broken 1995 Ferrari F355 with a six-speed manual transmission. The owner was driving the car when he heard a big pop and then saw a massive cloud of smoke. He did promptly pull over and then saw coolant was gushing from the engine bay. Now he was pretty dejected as the car always broke shortly after he spent thousands in repairs over and over again. So he parked the car in his garage for a few months until I talked him into trading my NSX towards it, plus I wrote him a check for $10,000. Now this purchase decision does sound insane, but the Ferrari market has been pretty crazy lately. I was about to settle for $37,000 for my modded NSX, which is below market, but it's worth less as I customized it way too much and turned off a lot of the purists. With the $10,000 on top, I'm in this Ferrari for $47,000, which is a great deal if you look at the current Ferrari market. The cheapest convertible six-speed for sale on Autotrader right now is $54,000, which it looks pretty sketchy. But the average asking price for one of these on Autotrader is actually much higher at $75,000. So while mine is broken and is on the higher side of the mileage at 40,000 miles, it is in great condition, has a clean history report, and has had a few big repairs out of the way that are common with the 355, like valve guides and headers. But unfortunately, it's right at the five-year-old mark on its last major service, which requires dropping out the engine to change all the belts. But this was done only 3,000 miles ago. I think I'm going to put the major service off for a few months so I can enjoy this car in the spring before doing the major with the wizard in the summer, when I have more time and my TV show is done filming. But I'm counting on this coolant leak being a minor repair. And it could be. Maybe it's a $100 hose, or maybe I need to rebuild the engine because it's totally cooked and it'll cost me $25,000. I, I really don't know, but we're about to find out as the wizard and I are going to start this thing up and start looking for leaks. Wizzy? Oh, Wizzy! This teleporting stuff is really taxing on my energy, Tyler. Well, I hope you're up for finding some leaks today. I think I am. I'm ready. I'm ready to fight it out as well as you are. Okay, so what do you think we should do? Should we put some coolant in it and start it up and yeah, see? we'll put some coolant in it and then we'll just listen. That's what we'll do. Because you took a peek under here and it doesn't look like there's anything too crazy going on that would prevent us from starting it and at least hearing it run, right? Yeah, we could do that. Okay. Well, let me get the hood open and... Okay. I think the battery was dead. Moment of truth. It's got power. Engage. Please don't break. Nothing. <laughs> Sounds good. It runs perfect. That's a relief. A relief that it runs well. And no smoke. No smoke no uh oh. I guess it's a relief that there's no catastrophic engine damage or something, as it seems to run great. But it runs excellent. I don't hear anything, any any abnormal noises. It's idle smooth. But the the leak, like I was doing some research on Google last night, and it seemed like they would leak from one of the radiators, and it would go to either side. But this one looked like it was dead center on the engine. Yeah, I looked at the radiators through the air inlets here and through the wheel well, through the little gills in the wheel liner. I don't see anything wet in there. I don't see anything wet in the hoses coming in too from the radiator. There's something right in the middle of the engine and in front. What's up front? 
There's a water pump. There's a whole bunch of myriad of coolant hoses and pipes. And there could also be a head gasket. Well, Depending let's on. let's don't say that dirty word, but a water pump. Yeah. I mean, even a water pump, you'd have to take the engine out to replace, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, it might be able to be done by taking the plenums off and get down in there. It might, I don't know. I wouldn't. But it's very likely to have to have the motor come out. So what's next? We need to put it on the lift and get a look from underneath, from below. And... It's raining. That's a lot of coolant. Mm-hmm. And what do you see? It's very tight. It is. Oh, sorry, I bumped you. I can see the water pump is dry. It is. But look at this ridiculous situation here with all the drive belts and the accessories where the engine has to come out for a normal minor repair. You could do the alternator and the AC compressor pretty easy, but any of this stuff up in there and yeah. I'd... Oh, I'm getting dripped up now. It's coming from the center of the engine straight up and I'm thinking that it may very likely be actually in the V of the engine is dripping forward. I don't see the water pumps leaking. I don't see any hoses leaking. I think that it's, we need to look, remove some things off the top of the engine and look down in there. I think we'll find our culprit. Let's drop it like it's hot. When the Ferrari gets an attitude. Dizino di Pina Farina. You've got a couple of weird Reservoirs, I guess. One's coolant and the other one's back here. Yeah, there's your power steering reservoir. Ah. The power steering pump's just right in front of it there. That could be done without pulling the motor. And here's your antifreeze reservoir. Here's your engine oils reservoir, since it's a dry sump engine. Here's is this a cinque valvole? Five? Yes, it is a five valve per cylinder. Yeah. Ah. This is the breast flesh the breastplate. Be careful there's <laughs> You didn't tell me there was I didn't get a chance. Well, you said breastplate, so naturally what was I going to hold it up to? So what do you a, there's a hose up there to the water pump and I don't see any trouble there. There's a the thermostat. I'm seeing something. What do you see? I see it looks like something exploded there on this rubber hose. Oh, look at that. Is that a clamp? The clamp's off of it because the it burst. And it's all wet right underneath of it. There's a whole puddle. So it, this is a heat exchanger right here. So it is a hose. It is. You can clearly see the coolant pouring out. <sighs> yes. <laughs> oh, you big, beautiful horse, you. Mwah. Mwah. <laughs> I love you. Oh, mwah. Oh. You have to do like this. Oh, yes. Mm. Ciao. So if we replace these two sleeves, the one that burst and the one in the rear just for good measure, I think you'll be ready to rock and roll and get off on the highway. Congratulations. I'm feeling pretty smug right now. Just a hose. Just a hose, a boot for the heat exchanger. Mm-hmm. Can't be more than... 20, 30 bucks probably. It's just a hose. Well, times 10 for each. Hmm? 20, it'll be 222.49 each. For a hose? For a boot, a sleeve they call it, a heat exchanger sleeve. Like my Lexus that I drove up here cost less than a hose on a Ferrari. That's right. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Ferrari, Tyler. So $220. Times two. Why two? There's two of them. When I told to take it apart, we want to go ahead and replace the other one too. Oh, because, yeah, you don't want the other one. It's probably just as brittle. Mm -hmm. So $500. Plus labor. Plus labor. And some antifreeze. 
That's so much better than an engine out job. That is, that is, but it is definitely a welcome to Ferrari ownership. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess we'll do this job whenever the parts get in in the next few days. And in the meantime, make sure you like this video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And uh, thank you for watching. It was a hose, guys. I was right. I'm never right. You need to do a happy dance. <laughs>